imagine building your own Netflix or Amazon Prime video? Well, this can be done with the help of the Raspberry Pi 4 using a Plex server, which allows streaming the media content within a local network. Now, using your local media files like movies, TV shows, music, videos stored inside a drive can be streamed across a multiple devices from Android TV, laptop, PC, and smartphones. Hey guys, my name is KSK Ryle. In this video, I will show a simple and easy way to build an ultimate Plex Media server using a Raspberry Pi 4 for your home. Let's get started. Now, before getting into the installation part, I just want to give a quick overview of a Plex Media server. Now, Plex is a global and client media streaming server to watch a movies, TV shows, and more. It is a versatile streaming service that gives a full control to create your own local media streaming server for home. You can store all your media files like videos, music, and movies inside a drive that is connected to the Raspberry Pi, which serves as a local media streaming server. So within a local network, devices like Android TV, laptop, PC, smartphones, iPad can access the Plex server and watch the content seamlessly. Anyway, the only requirements for this video, you need a Raspberry Pi 3 or higher. I recommend a Pi 4 for streaming a 4K content simultaneously on up to two screens. You need a hard drive or external SSD to store your media files like videos, movies, and TV shows. Also, you need a Class 10 SD card of at least 16 gigs or higher, a decent high watt power adapter, and an Ethernet cable to connect to the internet. And lastly, you need a computer running a Windows or Mac or Linux. Now on your computer, go ahead, open these links using any browser. Uh, the first one will take you to this page where you need to download a Raspberry Pi OS. I recommend a downloading a Raspberry Pi Lite Edition, which comes with command line interface. Now this way, we can remotely talk to the Raspberry Pi. Now head over to the second link and download the Balina Etcha. Now once it's done downloading all the files, place it somewhere on your computer for easier navigation. Now go ahead and install the Balina Etcha. Now once it's done installing the Balina Etcha, insert the SD card into the computer and flash the OS. Now once you are done flashing the OS to the SD card, go ahead, eject and reconnect back to the computer. Now you will see the boot partition of the SD card will be mounted. Uh, since we decided to control the Raspberry Pi remotely, so we need to enable the SSH upon booting. To do so, uh, within a boot folder, highlight the address bar on the top and type CMD. Now type echo SSH and press the return key. Now this will add the SSH to the boot folder. Now lastly, I'm gonna do a one more thing by overclocking the Raspberry Pi 4. Now keep in mind, do not overclock the Raspberry Pi without a proper CPU cooler. Now here, look for the file called a config.txt and add these lines to the bottom. Now overclocking the Raspberry Pi 4 may transcode the videos much faster and helps the Plex server to play the content seamlessly. Now go ahead, eject the SD card and connect to the Raspberry Pi 4. Also connect the SSD or external drive along with the power supply, Ethernet cable and turn on the Raspberry Pi. 
Now once the Raspberry Pi 4 has turned on, we need to find an IP address for communicating remotely. Now you can open a command prompt and type this command that will find the IP address of Raspberry Pi 4 assigned by your Wi-Fi router. You can also use the advanced IP scanner to find the IP address of the Raspberry Pi 4. Now as you can see, this is the current IP address of my Raspberry Pi 4. I'm going to tell my Wi-Fi router to reserve the same IP address permanently for the Raspberry Pi 4. Now this way, each time when the Raspberry Pi turns on, the Wi-Fi router will assign the same IP address. And it's very easy to remember that indeed helps us connecting to the Plex server via web browser. Now one of the easiest ways to set a static IP address for the Raspberry Pi 4, I'm going to log in into my Wi-Fi router and look for the client table and use this current IP address of the Raspberry Pi and also copy the MAC address of the Raspberry Pi 4. Now inside your Wi-Fi router, look for a DHCP static IP configuration and type the IP address and paste the MAC address over here. Now go ahead, remove all the columns of the MAC address and make it as a plain string. Now this way, the router reserves the same IP address for the Raspberry Pi 4 every time it restarts. Now it's time to connect to the Raspberry Pi 4 using a remote computer. Now on your computer, open a terminal or a command prompt and type SSH Pi and the IP address of the Raspberry Pi and press the return key. The default username is Pi and the password is Raspberry. Now before installing a Plex server, it's always recommended to set up a file sharing server aka NAS on Raspberry Pi 4. Now this way, you can copy the media content to the SSD or hard drive wirelessly from your computer. This eliminates the need of unplugging the SSD or hard drive from Raspberry Pi to copy the content. Now inside the terminal, type this command to log in as the root user. Then create a new directory using this command. Now this will create a directory named plex underscore media under the root directory. Now go ahead, type this command to give a full permissions to this folder. Now as you can see, we have created a brand new folder. Now type lsblk to see the connected drives. Now in this case, only one external drive is connected to Raspberry Pi and it's showing over here. Now as you can see, it's showing as sda2. Now type mount forward slash dev forward slash sda2 and aplex media to mount the SSD or hard drive to this folder named aplex media. Now once it's done, now type lsblk and you can see the external drive has mounted to this directory. Now keep in mind, every time the Raspberry Pi reboot, the external drive will be unmounted automatically. This causes a Plex server to run abnormally. Now to fix this issue, we're going to tell Raspberry Pi to mount the external drive to the specific folder upon reboot. Now anyway, to do so, type a blkid. And this time, note down the UUID of the external drive and copy it. Now type nano etc f stab and add these lines as it is at the bottom of the file. Now once it's done, save the changes by pressing Ctrl plus O to save the file and pressing Ctrl plus X takes you back to the terminal. 
Now it's time to set up a sample server that acts as a file sharing server and enables the functionality to copy the content wirelessly within a local network. To do so, first update the Raspberry Pi by typing this command. Next, type apt install samba samba common bin to install a samba. Now, along with that, you can install NTFS file system package. Now once it's done, you need to add a few lines to the Samba config file to make the file sharing server work as intended. To do so, type nano etc samba and smb.conf. Now inside this file, scroll to the bottom and add these lines exactly as it is. You can notice I enabled the file sharing server to be a public. Now this way everyone can connect to the Raspberry Pi remotely without any password within a local network. Now once it's done, type these commands to restart the Samba server. Now let me go ahead and show you guys how to copy your media content such as a videos, movies to the external SSD. Now on your Windows computer, open the control panel and choose a network and sharing center. Then choose the advanced sharing options and enable the network discovery. Now open the run dialog and type the IP address of the Raspberry Pi 4 followed by a two backslashes. Now that's it, now you can see the file sharing server is working properly. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a folder inside this NAS drive named videos and music and copy my files. You can copy any data present inside your computer to the NAS drive and access the content across multiple devices within a network. Now anyway, back to the Raspberry Pi terminal, it's time to install the Aplex Media Server. Go ahead, type these commands one after another.
Now, once everything is done, by default, the Plex Media Server will be running on port 32400. To connect to the Plex Server, you can either use a web browser or Plex application from the client side. Now, in this case, inside the Windows computer, I'm going to open a Chrome browser and type the IP address of Raspberry Pi with a colon and the port number and forward slash web to access the web interface of the Plex server, which is kind of similar to a Netflix. Now go to the Plex website and create a free user account. Once it's done, go ahead and log in into a Plex server. Now as you can see, it shows how Plex works. Go ahead and proceed with the further step. Now here, I don't need a Plex Pass to watch the premium content. I'm gonna go ahead and skip this step. Now it's time to name the Plex server. I'm gonna name it as a Raspberry Pi 4 and make this option a staked and click on next. Then under the media library, choose to add a library. And I'm gonna choose the movies option here. Now choose to add a folders and tell the Plex server where the video files are stored inside the storage drive. Now once it's done, click on add library. I'm going to create another library named a music by repeating the same process one more time. Now if in case you have any DVDs, rip the content and store the data inside the storage drive. Now this way the Plex server will automatically add a subtitles and download the metadata from the internet and organizes all your files. Now once everything is done, click on next. And as you can see now we are inside the uh, server. The content you see is directly coming from the Plex uh, which can be watched for free. But to access our content, I choose more from the sidebar and here you can see the Raspberry Pi 4. Now from here you can choose a movies and see all of the files and play them from multiple devices. Now as you can see, this is the 4K footage that is playing without any frame drops. Now I can play the same 4K video on two screens very easily, a 1080p video on three screens and 720p video on four screens. Now it's not bad though, Raspberry Pi 4 still handles the Plex server like a charm, no issues will be faced. Now if in case you have any issues while playing the content, try to optimize using a built-in transcoding feature. To access a Plex server on Android or iPhone, download an application called Plex TV and sign in with your credentials. Now from here, choose the Raspberry Pi 4 and start watching the content. Now overall, I would say Plex Media Server is a simple DIY project for the Raspberry Pi that helps in creating your own Netflix-like streaming media server for your home to watch your content across the local network. So what do you guys think about it? So let me know in the comments section down below. So if in case you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down there and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and consider hitting the bell icon to receive the latest notifications of my videos. Thanks for watching this video. This has been KSK Ryo. I will see you in my next one.